going on everybody it's aaron tates and welcome back to the channel now today we're going to be wiring in some aftermarket switches for all my aftermarket lighting my headlights my rock lights my wheel lights and rock lights is something i've gotten a lot a lot of questions on a lot of people have asked me how i wired them uh what type of switch i used how i wired the switch just a lot of questions in general in regarding the rock lights so i figured this would be a good video for you all because it's going to cover my rock lights, my wheel lights, and my headlights. And I'm going to put in an extra switch for my reverse lights because eventually I would like to wire those into the switch. That way whenever there's someone behind you with some bright headlights, you can flip those reverse lights on. And I'll let them know that their high beams are on and they'll turn them off real quick. So let me show you guys everywhere I have my wires ran. Okay, so if you come to the front of the truck, we start off right here with my rock lights. I started the wire right up there where you can see that ground is at. And the wire runs along the frame rail right here and then I bring it up right there where it's zip tied and it comes in this fender well. We have it spliced together with some heat shrink into the positive. This is the ground, it's grounded out right there to the fender. The wire comes down and I have it ran to that rock light and it runs all the way down the tab. We have it come through back here. It comes up, I have it hidden behind this bed rail. How I did that is I drilled little holes and I ran a zip tie through because I didn't want a lot of screws sticking up in my bed like how the rock lights are. These are my grounds for the rock lights, these screws. I have them ran through and I have the ground wire on each one, but that wire runs all the way across. It goes from that fender well, comes down right there and runs across there. I have a rock light there and it continues to run across and it's the same process all the way down we get to our fender wheel. We have our two rock lights there. It comes up, heat shrinks in here, and then it goes into the firewall. My headlights, those wires come right through here in this wire loom. They run up the side over here. And all of my grounds for the rock lights up here, my headlights and my wheel lights are all right here. I already ran the headlight wire into the firewall. The only one I have left out is my wheel lights because I was gonna show you guys how I do that. And this wire right here is for my wheel lights. I'm going to be connecting a wire to that and running it in through the firewall and into our switch. Okay, now that we're in the truck, I wanna to explain to you how switches work. We just have these little push three prong switches. You have Three prongs, you have two positives and one negative. The negative is actually to light this light up. So you have your power in, that is straight from the battery. You should have a wire with an inline fuse on it running straight from the battery to come in. And then you have your out wire. That wire runs out and goes to whatever accessory you're using. So like I said, the headlight wire and rock light wires are already ran inside the cab. So you would run this wire straight to that positive on the rock lights or the headlights or whatever it may be. And then the ground is just if you want this little light, if I can get it, if you want this little light on the switch to work. But really you only need two of these prongs. You don't have to run the ground because as long as you have your lights grounded out or whatever accessory you're using grounded out on its own, you won't need the ground on the switch. But I'm going to show you underneath the hood where I have the power wire ran to the battery because this is my rock light switch. I used to have my E fans right here and when, the, actually the E fans was here, rock light switch was here and how this got so big is I had a wire ground out because I w ran the wires poorly before the switch melted to the dash and it almost caused my truck to burn down. But I have the positive wire that's coming straight from the battery I have it ran right here. The wire comes inside this, connects to the bolt in here. I had put an extra 
threaded nut on here. I actually found this in my spare nuts and bolts inside. Put that on there, ran that wire to it. Comes up here, about a 30 amp inline fuse. Runs all the way up, runs across here, runs through this little mess of wires and runs into the firewall. Then goes from the firewall down here across my dash and up over to there. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm wiring these switches. I'm gonna be putting all four switches right here. Okay, I'm just gonna throw the switches, but I'm going to be putting all four switches across here and I mean, just hit each one. In order to do that, we have to take this dash piece off. So you wanna turn your key to the run position, but don't actually start the truck. Drop that gear shifter all the way down to first. Drop the steering wheel as low as it'll go. I like to grab up top right here by the gauge cluster or on each side. I just grab up top and I pop out and you just work your way around and then just pull it out and set it to the side. Then you can put your gear shifter up back to the top, move your steering wheel back to wherever you want it. You can shut the truck off. Now, I'm gonna be pulling this switch out because I am not going to be using it. And I'm actually, I that parts truck I had a couple months ago, I got a plastic piece out of it. I'm actually going to be using that to put back in that hole so it looks factory and clean there instead of having a big gaping hole in it. As you can see, this is just a two prone switch. It doesn't have that ground on it just because there's not like a light or anything on it. I am going to run the ground on these because I think it would be cool to have all the lights light up and it, they light up when they're on to let you know whether they're on or not. But I'm gonna pop this piece out, which should just be some snap pins. Oh, it's actually a little bit more complex than that. If you just watch that, I'd take out the passenger airbag thing and plug it because I needed this out and this is actually one solid piece. I didn't know. I thought it kind of be like these down here where they just pop out. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a new piece in. That way that's nice and clean again. Now we'll get out and do the measurements for these switches. Okay, now that we have the plastic piece out, I'm gonna get it back here and I'm gonna measure how long it is. Let's see this where you guys can see it. It is about three and three quarters in length. So three and three quarters is just shy of being two inches being the middle. So the middle, let's say, is in between an inch and, a and three quarters and two inches. I can get this to stay. We'll mark it. I'm gonna say center is about there in length. And then width-wise, this is about an inch and a half. So about an inch and a quarter is going to be, or three quarters of an inch is gonna be about the middle mark there. So now we know where dead center is. These switches are about an inch and three quarters in length. So we want to place them in a couple different spots. I'm going to stop you guys. I need to use the calculator on my phone, and I'll pick you guys up once I have everything marked. Okay, well, I thought I could do four, but as you guys can see, I cannot because they're overlapping just being this close. So if I ever wanted to run these reverse lights into a switch, I'm going to have to do it somewhere else. So we're looking at to have everything centered Pretty good. We're looking at something like this. Gonna have to do some more measurements, but it's gonna be something along these lines. I am using step bit. Just wanna drill out and keep testing to make sure it fits, but I'm gonna get everything marked up the way I want it and I'll pick you guys up. I apologize, this might be a little hard to follow because there's a couple marks, but I marked, measured, marked, and measured, and I'm using a Sharpie because this is black and like pencil or anything's not gonna show up. This mark right here is where the first one is going. And then the center right here is where we centered it, is where the second, this one where I dropped the line down is where the third one is going. And this is a step bit, so this is gonna cover 
any of those marks. So let's get into drilling this out. everybody they're together they're a little uneven over here but it's gonna probably gonna bother me for a while nothing i can do about it now they're already they're already in there so now let's get our wires ran and now before we do anything else inside the tab we need to get the wire ran all inside the tab so i'm going to show you what i do to connect the wires and how i run it through the tab because a lot of people i know when i first started to mess with wiring that was a, a big confusion point for me it was kind of like what do i what do i do with it how do i get it through the tab things like that so i'm going to break it down for you these little connectors that you just saw me grab these are something that my buddy brandon let me borrow uh they're solder seal connectors i'm gonna buy him a brand new kit because i've used quite a bit of them but all you basically do is you just get you a nice strand of wire you stick it inside the little connector kind of like so and then you get your other wire set that off the side get the wire you're connecting to it okay i'm going to trim off some of the wire on it because what excess don't need that much wire on both of them as a matter of fact so See how long this is? We don't, we don't need it that long. That's just stuff that's gonna get in the way and leave exposed wires. So now, just wanna put your wire through on both sides. Try and get it to meet in the middle. You want it around the solder right here because now we're gonna take a lighter. You can use a little heat gun, whatever you want. We're gonna heat up where the solder's at. So that solder is going to melt like it just did. And the ends of this is heat shrink. So now the solder's melted. And I'm going to let it cool down before I let it go. And then we're going to run the rest of this wire right here. We're going to run through the cab. Okay, so how I do this, I have this probably about a 8 inch to 8 and a 10 inch long Pittsburgh flathead screwdriver. I get the end of it like this, not super close to the end, but not very far away. So when you stick it through, it doesn't push the wire off and you don't have to like reach down the whole screwdriver just to get the wire. Now we're gonna get some electrical tape because electrical tape is cheap and easy to take off. And we're just going to wrap this wire up don't go super crazy because you're gonna have to take this off in a second but we make sure to cover the end down here and just break it off and now this is where it gets kind of tricky for some people because they get confused see right down here where all these other wires are just mysteriously disappearing they're going where the rest of my wires are at but you just want to find a hole and kind of wiggle your way through to let screwdriver dead ends. Now let me show you where it comes out at. We come to the driver's side where I ran it through and you look up and under. It'll be hard to see on camera. This is a screwdriver. The wire is still on there. So all you want to do is take the wire off. Okay, once you have the wire pulled through, as you can tell, I've got quite a bit of it because I'd rather have extra than not enough. You want to run it through your dash however you like. It's hard to see, but you can see where all my old wires come in and they run up into the dash. I bring them up through next to the steering rack, across and back and through there. So just 
find a route that you'd like and kind of hard to show you guys i know it's gonna be a terrible angle so i'm sorry i'm not really showing how i do it but try and find a route that you like because i don't really have room to put the camera and put my body in there to run it so i'll pick you guys up once i have it all ran through okay now that i have all of my wires ran into the cab i have my switch panel here this is where it might get a little confusing for some people because this is where i kind of got confused when i was trying to figure out how to do this I'm, I wired everything and I know what's what. This goes to my headlights. This is my wheel lights. And this is my rock lights. These are all my return wires for those three things. This is my constant power wire. As you can tell, I marked it quite a bit. Now I'm going to be doing something that I kind of figured out how to do a little while ago and it makes a lot of sense. So we're gonna cut this old connector off and we're going to splice it. And now we're going to get some of this spare wire. We're going to cut off a couple inches, about four inches, give or take some. We're going to splice the end of it. And if you guys are wondering what these are, there's some blue point wire splicers. I bought them off a snap-on truck a while ago and they are amazing. Now we're gonna fray these wires up a little bit so I can twist them together and now we're going to get one of these switch connectors and you want to try and make sure that you can get all the wires in there pretty sure I've got them all in there so uh, crimp it down okay give it a little pull test make sure they are connected now we're going to repeat what we just did I'll explain everything and then it'll make sense, I promise, guys. Okay, now you're looking at this and you're wondering, Aaron, what the hell did you just make? But this is a constant wire. This is your constant power that will supply each one of your switches so you don't have to run a power to every switch. You can use just one wire. Now, I don't know if I didn't get the memo and people have been doing it this way for a long time, but I just found out about this recently and I thought of how smart it really is. So I'm going to do the same thing with the ground wire and I'm going to ground that out as well. That way, all of these will light up. Okay, now that all the wires are in, we're going to start connecting everything. Okay, so all the switches are hooked up properly. We'll just push them back into their holes. Just like so. Okay, now we just need to shove a lot of these wires back in here somewhat the way it was before. Need to re-hook up this air bad, just like that. Now, shove everything back in, just like that. Now reinstall your dash and you'll be set. Now let's take a look at the outside now that we've seen the switch panel let's take a look at the outside okay so if we look nothing is on we walk over to our switch panel rock lights are on headlights are on 
and now I can control my wheel lights with my phone. The whole reason I did this switch panel is because my rock lights were actually running my battery dead while they were off. The module itself was drawing power, so I knew I needed to run it on a switch, and that was the whole point. And the switch panel was so I can cut off all power to it whatsoever. So now the switch panel is a success. I had to come on the porch to close out the video. The bugs are way too bad outside. The mosquitoes are eating me alive. But guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys have been wondering how I have my rock lights ran, how I wire them and everything. So here is the tutorial of how you wire up a switch panel, how you wire up rock lights. Any aftermarket lighting can be wired up this way. And hopefully you guys really enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys would like to use that placement in your trucks or your Tahoes or whatever you like. I will have all these switches linked down below, the connectors, everything I use in this video will be linked down below. Anything from wire, the connectors, all of it will be down in the description. Now I did buy a sheet of ABS plastic because I was gonna make a switch panel, but honestly, I'd rather have the spot where it's at. I think it looks a lot better right there. So thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, comment what you guys would like to see, and thank you guys for following the build. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.